most women are coming to you. They're perimenopausal, menopausal, and saying, okay, I love my husband. I, there's just nothing there anymore. I don't know what to do. There's no libido. What do you tell them to do? Yeah, just thinking about a patient I saw the other day from Latin America. She flew in to see me and she, at 36 years old, she had a hysterectomy with both her ovaries removed for endometriosis. Initially, she wasn't given on any hormone therapy for almost a year until she sought it out um, separately from, you know, another, another practice. And she was put on, um, she was put on testosterone pellets and estrogen pellets and said, okay, this will, this will help you. And then she was losing hair. She continues to have vaginal pain, dryness, and ability to have sex. And I, I've, I'm seeing her now when she's 41 years old. So five years after hysterectomy. And she's been struggling with this. She says, I'm, you know, I'm young. I love my husband. I don't want to have sex with him. It hurts. It's just painful. I power through, but he knows it hurt. You know, he knows that I'm uncomfortable and he feels, you know, it's just creating a, a disconnect in our relationship. And I, uh, you know, I look at in this situation, right? Like what's happening in this situation. First of all, we have to address the three issues that are affecting intimacy that create us, that cause us to get into the you know, the, the boredom or the ennui or the, um, the, you know, roommates instead of lovers, right? We're kind of separating. And that is the issue of discomfort. So vaginal pain, pelvic pain. So, and also desire, issues of desire. So that can be hormonal. And the third thing is disconnect. So discomfort, the three Ds, discomfort, desire, and disconnect. And those are the majority of the issues with loss of intimacy, discomfort, desire, and um, disconnect. And so review all of those things. And with my client, of course, I'm doing hormones and lab tests, doing a physical exam. And, um, and in the case of endometriosis, endometriosis can really um, settle in the peritoneum, even though she had surgery and she was cleared out from endometriosis, but it can cause inflammation in the intestines. It can be a result of or contributor to leaky gut issues. So you got to heal the gut and the vagina is a reflection of that. So here she is young at 41, surgically menopausal with very atrophic, painful vaginal tissue and inflamed. And so that's one thing that I'm going to address with her. And then the trauma that she's been through, not feeling, she goes, you know, and she's a high level executive. She goes, I don't feel at home in my body. It's foreign to me. I don't understand what's happening to me anymore. And so addressing those issues and oxytocin may come in again, focusing on how she can make it naturally. And that's, that's the first step. And we make it in so many ways naturally. So, but identifying that she, it's not in her head, you know, she, you know, it's not something that she can think her, you know, uh, think differently about. I mean, she really has to focus on the actions and the, the thoughts too, that help create oxytocin hormone. And then the other is the desire. And in her case, the you know, two reasons for lack of desire, I mean, zero libido for this young 41 year old is the, the discomfort, the pain, the pain with um, intercourse, and as well as the disconnect, you're you feel dissociated, you're not at home with your body. And I always tell my clients, if you know, something's going to hurt every time you do it, you're not going to want to do it. As much as you love the other person, you're just not going to want to. You brought up so many things that don't just apply to intimacy, but just overall life is um, being at home in your body, feeling, feeling confident, which if you don't feel confident or one with yourself, how are you going to feel intimate with someone else, right? And it's that mind piece, the mind body connection. And if you are doing all of the right things, the diet, the exercise, the sleep, all of that doesn't matter if you are not in a good mental space, because like we talked about that stress and that cortisol is going to react to your mental state because your mind doesn't know what's real and what's not real. So if you are playing a program in your brain, like you're talking about, it's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. It's going to be painful. Well, it's already painful before it even starts. And that's going to create cortisol to increase and create 
even more of a disconnect. And one thing that I, I love that you talked about, which I don't hear a lot of people talk about, is that the, some of these hormones are acidic versus alkaline. And we have all heard that, you know, acidity feed is the feeding ground for disease, for cancer, for all of that. It's inflammatory. It's all bad things. <laughs> so um, cortisol is acidic, correct? And oxytocin is more alkaline. But Absolutely. That, that, that mind piece is so important. Um, it, and it's, it's, I'm just thinking through, like, when you're dealing with something just yourself, it's easier because you're not, you're not feeling like you owe someone else someone something. But when you have a partner who is desiring you, and you feel like you owe them something, or you want to at least be there for them, it puts that extra layer of stress on you as you're dealing with all of these hormonal changes. And it's it's almost as if you, Dr. Anna, need to be meeting with the husband and the wife together and not just the wife and 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 walking her through this. Um, does that does that make sense what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. That's exactly correct. You know, and that's where cortisol creates this huge disconnect. It breaks down healthy boundaries, whether they're in our in intestines or in our life. And um, it's acidifying. It will rob Peter to pay Paul on our physiology. It will take minerals from our bones to keep homeostasis in our body. So yeah, no, that's exactly, exactly it.